prehistoric, powerful, with a bite that could pulverize your skull, alligators. With a drought in Florida and all the gators jammed together, there'll never be a better chance to meet them in the flesh. Wow! I'm going to get this close and have a special mission to get shockingly close. I'll meet devoted mums and musical dads and see extraordinary behaviours. Home sweet home. Relaxing in a warm bath. This is one of my favourite pastimes. And this is a very special tub. I'm sharing it with some gorgeous ancient reptiles. I had my first one of these as a pet when I was 14 years of age. To be precise, it was a spectacled caiman, which is more like a crocodile. <laughs> Everyone always asks, what's the difference between an alligator and a crocodile? And I just happen to have one here. Don't worry about the suds, they're for babies, so the crocodilians don't mind. This is a baby Nile crocodile, and look at the difference. The American alligator here, that's got a big, broad snout, and if you look like that, there's a C there. So it's the opposite of what you'd think. If you see the C, that means you've got an alligator. And the other thing, the crocodile's got a snaggle tooth. The fourth tooth on the lower jaw, it sticks right up. But in the alligator, there's sockets in the upper jaw and the teeth all fit into sockets. He's opening his mouth to show you. Of course, you can't be an alligator hunter in North London. But have a look at this. Wanted alligator wrestler, must be brave and a risk taker. No experience needed. That's the job for me. I'm off to Miami. Not alligator country yet, but I've spotted plenty of other exotic wildlife. You wouldn't know it in the city, but southern Florida is in its second year of drought, and many alligators are marooned in shrinking ponds. Florida's one and a half million alligators are getting desperate, and they've started coming into town in search of water, causing big problems. And that's where my special mission will come in. Now, I'm heading out of Miami to get experience with alligators. I'm about to try my hand at the job I read about at home. I'm a little nervous, but this training with Miccosukee Indian Kenny Cypress will be crucial, because later I'll have to deal with nuisance alligators. And that's a big one. Are you going to get him? Yeah, I'll go in and get him. Yeah. Wow! Look at all these muscles. I haven't got those. <laughs> You'll get the hang of it. Now, I mean, I'm hoping I may, you know, to help with nuisance alligators. What I will have to do is get to that business end. Show us how you do it. You want to come around in front of him. All right, first thing, you want to get him to open his mouth so that he don't see you that well. Oh. Oh. <laughs> and when they snap those jaws shut, I mean, that's 3,000 pounds per square inch, and that's phenomenal. And they're striking them. Oh, wow. <laughs> But it's easy to keep them? Yeah, you can keep them closed. A little child can keep them out closed. So you put your hand here and you move quick. Grab it here and get, put weight on his back and keep the head up. <laughs> you make it look so easy, but I bet it isn't. <laughs> well, I've been doing this a long time, so... <laughs> Let me have a go, but can I try a smaller one? But, but a, you see, a smaller ones are faster, aren't they? Because a five-foot alligator is going to be a lot faster than a ten-foot alligator. So the, the one I'm going to try is faster than this one? Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> okay, they are so strong. Am I in a danger zone now? Yeah, so you gotta be careful when you do this. So jump. Just jump there? Yeah. Okay. You cover the eyes with your hands while you jump in there. So I put the hands on the eyes now? Well, jump down, put your weight on his back, and cover the eyes quick. 
Okay. We push down. Okay. Cool, no wonder you sweat. I'm getting nervous about <laughs> doing this. <laughs> Trust me, I am too. <laughs> Look at that now. Okay, I've got to pluck up the courage and I sit right just behind the front legs, yeah? Mm -hmm. The mouth's closing a bit. Wow, no wonder, sweat dripping off yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> now, what do you... oh, they are strong, aren't they? Yeah, if you start thrashing around, just Let go, don't try to you... fight it, just yeah. hang on. What would you do if you're on your own and you want to put a, a rope or something around the... I mean, how can you hold it? My, there's got no hands free here. You want to stick his mouth under your jaw, your chin? What, so like... Yeah, squeeze with your chin. <sighs> Or that hiss, that gets the... There you go. Well, I see, and then you the tie the string. string and everything. That's how scientists do it. Oh. God, I can hear that hitting. It's like going all the way through my body. Let me go, and now just back on the... Mm -hmm. right like that. <laughs> and how do I get off now? This is a... Just yeah, put the head down and move quickly. Yeah, move. You know how feisty That hiss is... Get... Yeah, she's... gets feisty. We're free. There you go. Thanks, Kenny. You're welcome. Thanks for showing us all that. I just want to see him in the wild now. I, can't, I think I've got a few techniques, yeah? Yeah. Got the job, Major. <laughs> <laughs> a baptism of fire, but these were captive alligators. Now it's time for my first encounter in the wild. That evening, I travelled to an extraordinary place, a small pool jam-packed with alligators. Look at that. There's hundreds of bright orange red eyes looking at me. Alligators have got mirrors at the back of their eyes to gather every scrap of light at night, just like cats, except cats have got green eyes. These are beautiful orange eyes. When alligators gather together like this, there's tensions. Even though they're reptiles and it sounds stupid, you can almost feel the tension in the air. I want to observe what they're like when they're crowded together like this. I can't use a white light, so I'm going to turn that off. That would disturb their behaviour. But I should be able to see brilliantly with this image intensifier. And what I need to do is to get right out there in the midst of those alligators. I'm planning to get into the water with them, but that would be suicidal here. I definitely need the safety of a boat. There's one coming right up alongside. They're curious about anything new, and it's clear they're really hungry. This is magical. You can just see them gliding through the water, just see the scales of their back just breaking the surface. Some of the bigger ones are hunting, but the trouble is there isn't any food here. They've been here too long, they've eaten all the turtles, they've eaten all the fish, and all there is to eat now is each other. Smaller alligators try to keep out of the way of giants by sticking to the shallows, but sometimes there's no escape. An adult has just nailed an adolescent. It's shaking it, shaking it like a dog shaking a rat. Alligators can't chew, they can only grip. So they thrash and thrash until they dismember the bodies of large prey. Cannibalism is always chilling. To us, killing your brothers and sisters is equally nasty. In the spring, alligators actually benefit from this unpleasant behaviour. Great white egret chicks fight bitterly for food, and often the oldest deliberately push smaller chicks out of the nest, where jaws are waiting. I never thought I'd see a one-ton alligator fly through the air, 
but they can shoot over five feet out of the water. I've always been intrigued by their adaptations to survive in air and water. Without lips to seal their mouths, they must seal their throats with a special valve that ensures their lungs aren't flooded. They can open their jaws underwater and catch turtles, a favourite prey, then crush them at the surface with tremendous power. To really understand how all this works, I'm going where few people have ever been before. Inside an alligator's mouth. I really would not appreciate being in an alligator headlock, but I have to get close to the front end to show you the really important features, the elegant design. Come on. Come on, then. Come on. I'm touching the nostrils now. They're right on the top of the snout, just like a hippopotamus. If I can get this wonderful alligator to come up, and this journey that I'm taking right inside an alligator's mouth, you will be joining me, because on my head I have a little miniature camera. He just needs to lift those joys out of the water. They actually do like this being tickled. They've got sensory pits. Hey, <laughs> that's what we need. That's a close-up view of those teeth. They are pegs for grasping rather than cutting. And that's why alligators and crocodiles swallow their prey whole. An alligator can go through about 65 sets of teeth in its lifetime. Come on, that's it. Thank you, sir. Because an alligator doesn't have lips, when it closes the mouth underneath the water, the water just goes straight inside. So they need this special structure at the back of their throats. And there's a false pallet there. That rises up to stop them drowning when they go underwater. If I move my head, I can go right inside the mouth. Come on, open those jaws wide. Open those jaws wide. Right inside an alligator's jaws. I can see the glottis. There's muscles on that that close that up when he submerges. Wow. Wow. I had to be fast there, didn't I, really? Oh, that nearly sport my weekend. But alligators aren't just about killer jaws. They also help many other species to survive. Florida's enduring the worst drought for nearly 100 years. The Everglades are parched. But wherever you look, you can see these sparkling diamonds of water. Those are the alligator ponds. They're the only water for miles around. Alligators can't survive for more than a few days out of the water, so they dig their own pools, pushing mud backwards with their front legs, then sweeping it away with their back legs and tail. These alligator ponds have hidden treasure for me. They're a refuge for an extraordinary assortment of outrageous creatures, and I can't wait to get down there. Thanks, Al. The occupant of this pond is basking on the bank, so I've got a little while before she warms up to see exactly what lives in gator holes. It's early morning, and she cooled down overnight. I reckon she needs half an hour or so of solar power to have enough energy to investigate an intruder in her pond. There's a primeval creature that you find in alligator ponds that loves flesh. In fact, the Native Americans used to use these animals as aquatic bloodhounds to find the bodies of drowned people. I've got a little bit of meat here and some string, and let's see if I can attract one. I'll be back in a while to see if I've got a bite. But in the meantime, there are other swamp monsters I can fish for with a net. I'm after something really slimy, the sort of creature that might make your skin crawl. Not mine, though. Oh, look at that. Call me nuts, but these are the sort of animals that I adore. It's a unique Native American. This is an amphiuma. They've been around for 65 million years or longer. 
looks like an eel, it's as slippery as an eel, but look, you can see these tiny legs at the front of the body and there's another pair at the back. This is in fact a highly specialised salamander. Look at those bizarre eyes. <laughs> That's letting go now, back into the water. Those amphiumas are so weird. It beggars belief that they can be food. But there's a hunter that eats virtually nothing else. And that predator lives amongst the roots of water hyacinths. There, I can feel it between my fingers. This is what I've been looking for. This is the mud snake, a specialist feeder on those slimy amphiumas. And what it, ah, there. That's what they do when you pick them up. They don't try to bite, but they've got a spine at the tip of the tail. It just tried to get me in the flesh with that. They don't actually break the skin. And that spine, that's what they use to help them when they're feeding. They actually grab the amphiuma. They grab the slimy salamander with their mouth. They've got backward pointing teeth so they get a good grip. And then they try to pierce it with their tail or actually use the tail to help them get that towards their mouth. Let's let you go now. You go and see if you can <laughs> see if you can find an amphiuma to eat. There's a lot to see in these gator ponds, but I've got to be quick because the owner's warming up fast. Just time to see if there's anything on my line. Yeah. I've got to be careful. He's let go of the bait. Wow! Look at that. This is a snapping turtle. They've got a little vest, they can't put their head, way. they can't put their heads right back in their shell. Look at that, that's why it's called a snapper. Wow, you've got to be very careful. Those jaws are designed for cutting, not grinding. And a bite from one of these, a big one like this, could actually snip off a finger or snip off a thumb. Way. Look, whoa. <laughs> This is an extraordinary creature, and these have been around for nearly as long as alligators have. <laughs> these are, they are so prehistoric. Look at that tail, it's just like the tail of a stegosaurus. These wonderful tubercles along it, and these are, look, what a tremendous creature. But let's put him back. Sorry about that, you thought you were gonna get a meal and didn't. You go. <laughs> it's pretty hot now and I've been here a little longer than I planned. Whoops, here she comes. See you later alligator. That was a practice run for what I want to do next, swim with giant alligators. The big bulls have a remarkable courtship call, but to get close, I need help from someone who studied them for 20 years, Dr. Kent Vliet. Kent, it's seven o'clock in the morning. This is so exciting. When, when should they start their bellowing, do you think? They can start any time now. I've seen a lot of wildlife spectacles, but this is a phenomenal one, isn't it? This really is a phenomenon. There's no concentration of alligators anywhere else like this. How many do you think there are here? Well, I think now there's at least 200 alligators just in front of us. It's an incredible concentration due to this drought we've been having for the past two years. There's one with its head up there. That right. means it could start. Yeah, that, that animal's going to bellow. You see that head coming up? The and tail's then the tails. Yeah, yeah, the tail. Yeah. Now, there he goes. See, it's just drawn in there. It takes him a bit. That sound, it goes right through you, doesn't it? Oh, it's it? incredible. So I can almost there feel the ground going with it. Can I hear what it's like through the water? Can we try these hydrophones? Actually, yeah, the hydrophone is, uh, is the way to really perceive that infrasound. Try to get it out in that deep water. There's two components to the serenade, an audible bellow and a low frequency sound just below the scope of human hearing. Listen in the air, you only hear half of it, but this is just 
it goes right and it's making my blood curdle. Right, yeah, to absolutely. It. The low frequency call can be seen but not heard. The animal vibrates so much, water dances off its back. The alligator is one of the only animals to communicate through air and water simultaneously. I mean, it's like the whole world's reverberating, isn't it? Absolutely. It's Female alligators bellow too, but at a higher, more ladylike pitch, so they don't make the water dance on their backs. A lake full of courting alligators. I just can't wait to get closer to see the spectacle from water level. They're all around us now. I would really like a close-up. Look, you've done it. I mean, people should not swim with big alligators, but with you here. So what have I got to do? Just keep low. Stay there very low, move slow. Uh, don't let any animals come near you, obviously. But just try to get in a position and sit slap and watch. The, slap the water if they came close to me, is that? Yes, have the splash water toward them. How close have you got to bellowing males? Oh, I've gotten within 10 or 12 feet, but I wouldn't advise you to do that. I'd say keep, keep 20 feet between you and an alligator. Okay, well, if you're going to shout, if anything. I will. Can I, can I give sure. you this stuff? Thanks. Got it. Be careful. Kent said 20 feet, but I want a front row seat for the next performance of the water dance. A big male postures, I try yoga. A head slap. I can be intimidating too. A huge bull, he's starting up, but here comes another male. I really don't want to get caught between those two. In the shallows, there's another posturing male. And at last, I'm only six feet away from those dancing droplets. I'm so enthralled by the big bloke, I don't notice the stalker behind me. Luckily, the water's shallow. I think I've pushed my luck enough. This is brilliant. I can't believe how close I got to that displaying bull. But of course, all this noise, this commotion, this kerfuffle, it's got a purpose, and that purpose is mating. In fact, it's often the smaller females that start things off. Look at this one, flirting with two big males. Once a couple get together, there's lots of tender rubbing, swapping body odours in the water. This foreplay may go on for several hours, but it doesn't mean they're committed to mate. The female may decide to try a different male instead. When alligators do get it together, the female is submerged beneath the male, and if the pair get carried away, she may even drown. But usually there's a happier ending. Her eggs are fertilised and start developing inside her. About three weeks later, the female comes ashore to lay. Rather than build a nest from scratch, she usually renovates an old one, making a mound of mud and leaves two or three feet high. In a depression in the top, she lays 30 or 40 eggs. We're really lucky to see this. Egg laying usually takes place at night. The mother covers up her clutch with more vegetation. From this point on, she'll guard them with her life. They won't be ready to hatch for another two months. 
I'll be back then. <laughs> I've got some waiting time now, but I am really pleased about that because it gives me the opportunity to see two of Florida's rarest creatures. The first species, the manatee. These mammals can be 15 feet long, more than the length of two pool tables put end to end, and can weigh 3,000 pounds, as much as a car or a rhinoceros. They usually come up for a breath every four minutes or so, but sometimes stay submerged for over 16 minutes. They're vegetarians. Water hyacinths are their main diet in Florida. To process the hundred pounds of green stuff they eat every single day, these creatures need intestines that are 150 feet long. Manatees are so big, there aren't many predators they need to worry about, not even alligators, or the alligator's much rarer relative, the American crocodile. Remember those bathtub babies? How you tell a croc from a gator by the pointed snout. There are only about 500 American crocodiles left, all in Florida. So for me, swimming with one is a privilege indeed. It's August, and alligator eggs are close to hatching, but there are smashing grab raiders all around. In drought years, over half of all alligator nests are raided by raccoons and other predators. But it's a risky way to get a meal. With her eggs just about to hatch, the mother is extra vigilant. Too late to save this baby, but all is not lost. She secured the nest. It's time for me to meet hatchling alligators. In the Everglades, an airboat is the best way to get to the islands where the alligators nest. Listen to that. This is the first time I've heard baby gators calling in the wild. The mum's there. This is a pretty big mother. She's about eight feet long. But for me to get close, to watch her actually getting the babies, come on, Mum. I need to lure her, wow. lure her away. I'm the bait. Then hopefully I can get close and I really want to see the mum actually use those jaws to dig in the nest and get her babies. Listen to that hiss. Come on, come on, Mum. Oh, that snap really got my heart beating. That was a close one. If they run at you, they can run at 12 miles an hour, and I should be able to outrun her. Wow! Come on, Mum. Come on. Come on, eh? Wow! Now I've lured her away, I need to sneak up to the nest, stay still, and hope she doesn't attack me. To really get into the alligator's world, you've got to be low down, right on your tummy. I can't wait to see this. 
She used those jaws to frighten me away, wallop them together, but now she's going to use them with delicacy and precision. And here she comes. Astounding animal behaviour. This is what I live for. This is what gets the blood coursing through my veins. The mother's heard the babies. That's unbelievable. She's got a shell in her mouth. She's actually working the shell between her tongue and the roof of the mouth to help her babies hatch. This is really cool. It's not just her being attracted to the babies, they're actually walking towards her. They know that she's their ride to the water. One's walking just right into her mouth. Look at that, she's picking them up again. <laughs> but the babies seem to know that's the best way to get to the water. They stay around the nest. There's a little one here, and he's just waiting for mum to come back. But now she's gone, it gives me a chance to investigate one of the great mysteries about alligators. I've got to work fast. The puzzle, and it was only solved in the 1980s, was how alligators became male or female. How was their sex determined? Alligators aren't like us. They don't have an X and Y chromosome. Their sex is determined by what temperature they're incubated at. Incubation, that totally depends upon sunshine and the fermenting leaves deep inside this nest. The mechanism is so precise. If the eggs develop at a temperature between 32 and a half or 33 degrees centigrade, males hatch. If it's hotter or colder, you get females. This is a feisty one. They can bite as soon as they're hatched. And until very recently, baby alligators or crocodiles had to be killed to be sexed but there's a kinder way. It's slightly undignified for the alligator, but it's much better than being killed. If I'm gentle here, just open the cloaca. Cloaca, that's a brilliant word, and that is the opening of both their excretory and reproductory organs. And if I look inside here, just gently, gently, this is a male, that's the todger, that's what we'd say in the UK. Not a technical term, of course. If I put him back and go slightly deeper, sometimes nests can be all males or all females, or there can be a mixture of both. Let's have a look at this one here. So you have to be very gentle with them. They almost, it's almost like you, <laughs> a little cool there. It's almost like they're hypnotized when you hold them on their back. And just gently, gently, Open the cloaca, that's that brilliant word again. <laughs> and there, this has got nothing or virtually nothing there. So this is a little female. This nest is obviously in the sun, it gets sun for part of the day. So probably what happens is the eggs near the top of the clutch, they get a lot of sun, they warm up, so males hatch from those eggs. And the eggs that are deeper down in the nest, they're cooler, so they'll hatch out to be females. But I think, there's the mum coming back, so I better get down low. What makes you catch your breath with this, that little cry from those babies? Look at her now, trying to pick them up. The cry of the babies, that's a primal sound. That's a cry from the Mesozoic. A cry from the age of the dinosaurs. That. I can see the baby. She is so gentle with that little baby. 
This is ridiculous. These are reptiles, but I felt like a proud father. The first day of these little hatchlings' lives, they could live to be up to 50 years. <laughs> I think that's the last of the alligator babies. I can't hear any more chirping in the nest, but there are other hatchlings in here. Look at this, fresh from the egg, this leathery eggshell. This is a cute and gorgeous baby red-bellied slider. It's just hatched and you can see the tiny egg tooth at the tip of the snout. They use that to slice through the eggshell. They're called red-bellied sliders because when they get bigger, the whole of the plastron, that's the bottom part of the shell, that suffuses with a lovely red coloration. And when they're adult, the females, they lay their eggs, if they can, in alligator nests. It's the perfect incubation site for them. In fact, 60 out of 100 alligator nests can have baby turtles inside them. But turtles just leave their eggs to be incubated by the sun and then desert them. They don't show parental behavior like alligators and crocodiles. So these little chaps, they're not gonna get a ride to the water. So I'll help them. <laughs> I'm cradling about a dozen baby turtles in my hand, but I won't be able to do this when they're full grown. They can be the size of dinner plates. They don't have any teeth, but still catch fish, tadpoles and insects, slicing them up with their horny jaws. Baby turtles go it alone from the start, but alligator hatchlings stay together as a family. For two, sometimes even four years, they have their mother around to protect them. But from day one, they have to catch food for themselves. The hatchlings are also the hunted. A pair of otters. Mother alligator can't be everywhere at once, especially when she has 40 or so youngsters to protect. She's heard the baby's alarm calls, but the otters have got their meal and are away. At this size, the babies can still use her head for a sunbathe, but every time they leave her side, they're vulnerable. It's likely that only three or four of these hatchlings will survive to adulthood. This pig frog has probably got ideas above its station. <laughs> that was a fantastic wrestling bout. That little alligator, he is a plucky little bloke. And now I'm gonna see the rest of his family. I'd never risk impersonating mum like this if I didn't know she was on the bank and safely out of earshot. 
it's incredible to think that these tiny babies could grow to be 14 feet long and weigh in at over a thousand pounds. At that size, they're formidable predators and can be a danger. There's one alligator for every 10 people in Florida and with canals leading right into town, the reptiles can be tempted by different kinds of food. Alligators take about a hundred dogs a year, but it's not just our pets that are in jeopardy. I'm visiting 14-year-old Edna Wilkes. Two weeks ago, she and her friends were swimming here at night. I mean, this is a really busy lake, isn't it? Have you seen alligators before? Uh, no, I've never seen alligators out here. That's why I wasn't scared. But in Florida, they can turn up anywhere, and they're experts at concealing themselves. So it's pitch dark, and this is everyone's worst nightmare. What, what happened? I mean, what was the first thing that you felt? I thought it was my friend Mark squeezing my arm, just playing around. And I actually rolled my eyes and said, Mark, stop playing, and looked at my arm, and I saw his snout. Edna's arm was in an alligator's jaws. I didn't have time to scream, and just as soon as I looked at it, it he pulled me under and started. Oh, dear, so you didn't have time for a breath. Alligators drown their prey by pulling them underwater. As soon as I looked at him and like he saw me looking at him, he just starts spinning over and over. They spin to tear off chunks of flesh. I couldn't bear to watch her die, so I just went over and gave her my boogie board. And so this and this is the actual boogie board that that, that and you and mm -hmm. you grabbed hold of that. And did that? Yeah, it was laying, it was this sideways, and I just put my arm on top and my upper body onto it, just because my arm was just like halfway off, because he had actually, during the spinning, I heard a crack. Edna's arm had multiple fractures, but to escape, she had to risk her other arm. So I just tried to use my hands just to try to open his mouth and try to mess with them. And I guess I irritated him, and he let go. It's thought this alligator had been fed by people so it began to associate humans with food. Fortunately, attacks are extremely rare. Thank you so much for telling yes, us about thanks. that experience, and you really are the best friend anyone could hope for. Yeah. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks, Edna. Thank you. Time for my special mission. Now I must put to the test all the skills and knowledge I've picked up. A nuisance alligator has been reported in a swimming pool. I'm going to help a bloke who's licensed to deal with problem gators. He's my friend, Joe Wazalewski. There's a drought here, the worst drought in years. The gators are dispersed and swimming pool's perfect. Yeah, it's looking for water. Pools happen to be the next best thing. How many call outs do you get like this, a lot? This time of the year, several a week is, is, is not uncommon. I've got butterflies, but this is, this is a big test well, for me. This will be good but... for you. <laughs> And what a test. I've put my head in an alligator's mouth, been close to bellowing bulls, but now I'm going under the water Hello. to catch one with my Hello. bare hands. Wait, so when did you notice the gator in the pool? I came out to water flowers this morning and there he was. Cool. It's a big Goodness one, Nigel. Sake, that is a big one. I just got to do it. Be slow and careful, yeah? Slow, careful and deliberate and put my hand along, cover the eyes, and then get the front of the snout. I've got to make sure that the lower jaw isn't down, because then I'm going to stick my fingers in the mouth, as well, long as the mouth is closed. You could do that, or even push the head down to the bottom of the pool. OK, thanks, Joe. I'll be right here.
I'm forgetting every lesson that I learned. I've just got to get my hand around the front of that snout. He's incredibly strong and difficult to hold. I just hope he's getting tired. His jaws just missed me. Thankfully, I don't have to put his jaws under my chin. I've got Joe to help me. I did it. I can't Good job. It. <laughs> Thanks, boy. Wait, a couple more <laughs> strands and we're in good shape. Perfect. Look at that. You got him? Yeah. Slide him up. God, this thing has to weigh 300 pounds. OK. Fantastic. Good job. Now, once the tape's run, they're totally safe, yeah? Yeah, completely. Well, not really, because he could still move his head and he could actually break your arm. Yeah. Uh -huh. Thanks for that. Thanks good for job. Your advice. Brilliant. <laughs> what a year it's been. I've had some close shaves, Whoa. but wouldn't have missed a single one. There can be problems whenever people and alligators mix. And of course, once they start attacking us or even our pets, they've got to be dealt with. But I've also seen a more intimate side, water dancing males and devoted mothers. Look at that, she's picking them up again. <laughs> This bloke gave me a beautiful ride in that swimming pool. And of course, we couldn't let him be made into steaks and handbags. It's the law in Florida that any nuisance alligator over four feet long should be killed. But he's gonna spend a life of luxury here in this specially built pond at the Everglades Outpost. And I just hope that people that live in Florida never lose patience with their prehistoric neighbors, I have enjoyed my alligator adventure so much. Come on then. Off you go. <laughs>